What up YouTube fan, we in here, Anthony Talk Life, back with another video. And in this one, I am answering the question, why does a crop lens on a crop body still have a crop factor? Now, when it comes to the crop factor, such a hotly contested topic on the internet and on forums and on YouTube and everywhere. If you mention crop factor and you try to explain it, it is just a firestorm of comments and people having their thoughts on what it is. And really, I think everyone is saying the same thing. They're just saying it in a different way. And for whatever reason, people are very passionate about how you explain it. And to some degree, I get it because for people that don't know, it can confuse them if you don't explain it the right way. So I understand it and I don't want this video to turn into that. I'm actually, I don't want to cover the crop factor too much, but I do want to briefly explain what it is for people who don't know. And if you do already know what it is and you're not interested and you want to jump to the answer to the question, there's time codes in this video so you could just jump straight there. But I feel like I briefly need to touch on the crop factor to really be able to make that answer make sense. So the crop factor, Although it seems like it is something so deep, the crop factor is really very simple. It is sheer math. It is the difference between your full frame sensor and a non full frame sensor. Now, for whatever reason, and I have not taken the time to look it up and to be quite frank, I don't really care because I don't think it matters. But for whatever reason, the standard in the photography world is either your 35 millimeter uh, film or your full frame digital sensor. That is the standard in terms of size and what everything else is based off of. So when you have your crop factors, or in the case of when you go into medium format and full format, the percentages that you're applying to those things is based off of your 35 millimeter film or your full frame digital sensor. So the crop factor is sheer math. In the Canon world, the full frame sensor is roughly 36 millimeters and the crop sensor is roughly 23 millimeters. Different ones have slightly different sizes, but for all intents and purposes, those are the rough figures. If you simply take the size of your full frame, divide that by the size of your crop sensor, you get like 1.6 in some numbers. So there's your crop factor, 1.6. So it is sheer math, but how does that apply to lenses and cameras? When it comes to your lens, the crop factor has everything to do with the field of view, what you're able to see with that lens. And so that's why when you're reading in the forums or you have comments and people are getting bent out of shape because someone says, you know, this lens turns into this focal length when you put it on a crop sensor, that's completely incorrect because to give a quick, brief, non-scientific explanation of where the focal length come from, that also is sheer science and numbers. So to get the focal length, they essentially take a lens and at the point that that lens is focused to infinity, where the image through the image circle converges to essentially have a sharp image, that point and the distance from that point to your sensor in millimeters is how they get the focal length, right? So when you think of it that way, to make it easier, look at it as your rear, the rear element of the lens to your sensor, that distance, that is your focal length. That makes it easier to understand. It, it is more scientific, but that makes it easier to understand. So when you look at it that way, you can understand why putting a full frame 35 millimeter lens on a crop sensor body, it doesn't change that distance. That distance still remains the same. And so that's why when people say the lens turns into this, it is technically incorrect, but I think people know what they're trying to say, just different word choice. So. When it comes to the crop factor with those lenses, it is the field of view that we are essentially talking about. So when you take a 35 millimeter full frame lens and you have a certain field of view, when you put that same lens on a crop body, your field of view is smaller because the sensor 
is smaller. The sensor can only see so much. So when you have your full frame and you have your image circle that is so big and you have a smaller sensor, that smaller sensor can only see so much of that image circle and therefore your field of view is more narrow. So when you take your 35 millimeter, you multiply it by your crop factor, I don't know what that math is. I'll put it on the screen, but for the sake of it, it's probably 50 something, 56 I think it is. You have the equivalent field of view. So what your lens, your camera can see is a 56 millimeter field of view if you had a 56 millimeter on a full frame. So I feel like I've already spent way too much time on that. If you need more explanation on what crop factor is, take half a day and go out on the internet. You'll, you'll be able to have a blast, okay? So let's get to the question. Why does a crop lens on a crop body still have a crop factor? For a long time, this was something that confused me because I thought the whole point of having a crop lens was so that you didn't have the crop factor. That lens was specifically designed for that crop body. So why do you still have a crop factor? And the simplest answer is it comes down to what I just explained, field of view. Having a smaller sensor means that it's only able to see a smaller part of your image circle. And so therefore that field of view doesn't change just because you have a crop lens that you're putting on your crop body. It still is a smaller lens. The field of view is still smaller than what it would be equivalent to on a full frame. So you still have a crop factor. The whole point of crop lenses is that they're able to make the lenses smaller and more lightweight and more affordable. When you look at a full frame lens, because the sensor is bigger, the image circle of that lens needs to be bigger to make sure that the image circle covers the entire surface of that full frame. If you take that same full frame lens and you put it on a crop body, you have this big image circle that was big enough to cover your full frame sensor. Now you're putting it on a crop sensor, which is smaller, so now you have a, a circle that's way bigger than your image sensor, and essentially that sensor is getting rid of all of that extra image circle that it doesn't need. Hence where the crop factor comes into play. So what they're able to do with the crop lenses is that instead of having a circle that's too big, they make that image circle that's just big enough to cover your crop sensor. And that's why if you put a lens that is designed for a crop sensor, if you put it on a full frame body, which you typically can only do that with third party lenses, but if you put that on a, a full frame, you get vignetting because that image circle was designed for the smaller sensor. The sensor, because it is smaller, it only allows for so big of an image circle. And that smaller image circle is what makes that field of view more narrow. So even though you're putting a crop lens on a crop sensor, it doesn't change the fact that that sensor is smaller. And because that sensor is smaller, it is seeing a smaller image circle. And because that image circle is smaller than your full frame equivalent, you still would apply the crop factor. So hopefully that answers the question because for a long time, I did not understand it. And even when you Google, sometimes you don't get a direct answer. When I used to Google back in the day to try to find the answer, you really just got that the crop factor still applied. And it's like, well, I, I know that. I'm trying to understand why does the crop factor still apply because it didn't make sense to me. But the more research I did and the more that I thought about it, then it really clicked and it's more a fundamental of the image size and going back to that standard of using the 35 millimeter film or the digital full frame size as the standard. Now, as I mentioned, it, it's, it's an irrelevant thing for the most part. You know, if you need, if you're using two different systems, so if you have a full frame and you have a crop sensor of some sort and you're using both systems and you wanna be able to match those field of views, then that's where, yes, the crop factor does come into play because you want to know if you want this field of view, what size focal length do I need over here to get that same field of view? But if you're just in a crop sensor world, a micro four thirds world, whatever the case may be, the crop factor is irrelevant. 
Whatever lens you put on your camera, you're going to be able to see what you can see. It doesn't matter how that field of view compares to full frame. It doesn't matter what the numbers are, the equivalent field of view. None of that matters. What you can see is what you can see and you can't change that. You can with speed boosters, but we won't go into that. For all intent and purpose, you can't change that. So the crop factor really isn't a relevant thing and it really is nothing that you need to get too hung up on. But I did want to answer the question because I've always had the question and I wasn't able to get a, a firm answer. So to reiterate, smaller sensor can see a smaller image circle. Smaller image circle equates to a more narrow field of view. And that is why your crop, your crop lenses on a crop body still have a crop factor. So hopefully this answered your question if you had this question. Hopefully this video was helpful. If it was, or if you just wanna support me and my channel, please give this video a thumbs up, it really does help. And if you like this content, or you like some of the other videos that I've been posting and you wanna make sure you don't miss anything, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And while you're at it, do like Anita Ward said, don't make her upset, ring that bell. As always, I appreciate your support. I appreciate you watching my videos. And until the next one, take care.